the Washington Wizards are smarter than you think. While they would likely be in an outstanding position right now had they seen the writing on the wall two years ago, they finally got the message. Turning Bradley Beal into Jordan Poole, a first, four swaps, as well as seven second rounders is outstanding considering the circumstances of Beal's contract and the no trade clause. But let the Washington Wizards be a cautionary tale of trying to force something that clearly won't work. Had Washington traded Beal a few years back, they could have received a package along the lines of Tyler Hero and three first round picks. And while this may seem somewhat comparable to the package they essentially got for Beal, there is a major aspect being lost here. This being that moving Beal years prior would have allowed the Wizards to bottom out likely both last and this year, leaving them with a better 2022 prospect and the potential to select either Victor Wembanyama or Scoot Henderson. But this video isn't about the Wizards missed opportunity, but rather the opportunity that lies ahead now. I want to start by getting into the major moves Washington has made this offseason. The big one obviously involving longtime franchise cornerstone Bradley Beal. As I said, if Washington had made this move years back, they would have been much better off. Despite this, Washington did manage to recoup more than I thought was possible for Bradley Beal, especially given the whole situation with the no trade clause and just the amount of money he was getting paid. The Washington Wizards traded Bradley Beal, Isaiah Todd, and Jordan Goodwin for Chris Paul, Landry Shamit, Six second round picks as well as four first round Phoenix pick swaps, including the years 2028 and 2030, which I think could be crucial. They then proceeded to trade Chris Paul to the Golden State Warriors for Jordan Poole, a top 20 protected first as well as a second. When I saw the initial Beal trade not including the seconds or swaps, I still thought it was the right move as Washington needed to bottom out badly, but I couldn't help but dwell on how little they got. But after flipping Chris Paul for a new young star in Jordan Poole as well as more draft capital, I feel a lot better about the move. The Wizards also moved their other star, Chris Saps Porzingis, for Tyus Jones and some other role players and draft capital. Tyus Jones is a great floor general who the Wizards could potentially move for draft picks or keep to begin rebuilding their culture. Before I get on to the Wizards future, the last member of the Wizards big three of sorts from last year, Kyle Kuzma is up for a new deal in free agency. All signs point towards a Kuzma exit from Washington and depending on the destination, the Wizards could potentially be receiving at least something in a sign and trade. Now to get on to the Wizards future, which is what really excites me, starting off with their new cornerstone Jordan Poole. While Poole has become an easy player to hate, especially after not living up to the expectations of his recent contract extension, I think Poole was a great get for the Wizards. Poole averaged 25, 5, and 3 as a starter last season, and don't be surprised when he averages 25 plus as the assumed number one option for Washington this year. He also reportedly texted the Wizards lottery selection Blyle Kubli, who I will be getting into in a second, following his selection, which is obviously showing great traits of being a leader that he likely gathered in Golden State, you know, probably from number 30 and not number 23. While his contract doesn't look great at the moment, I think Washington taking a shot on Poole to be the star of, let's be honest, the tanking roster is a great get. He will provide some flashiness and entertainment for the fans and seems to have some great leadership qualities. The Wizards also selected Francis Blyle Coolably, who is apparently still growing with their lottery pick this year in the NBA draft. The 6'6 wing was teammates with Victor Wembanyama last season and has the length to be a modern, versatile defensive wing. He shot 43.8% from deep this year, albeit only on 38 attempts, but his defense is where we will see his impact early on. Now we get to the ugly part, and listen, although I think a lot of these guys have potential to be solid NBA players, it is kind of crazy to go look at the Wizards roster and see exactly what they're working with. While I think all of Daniel Gafford, Corey Kispert, Denny Avdia, and Johnny Davis have at least solid role player potential, I'm unsure if any of them will be much, much more than that. Now, Wizards fans, listen, the storm is coming. You're going to be at the bottom of the NBA for the next two to three seasons. But unfortunately, this is what needed to happen for you guys to become a real contender and not just be a, you know, I mean, it'd be one thing if y'all were making the playoffs with Beal and Porzingis and all that, but y'all weren't even making the playoffs, bro. It's like, you know what I mean? Y'all be, y'all would have been a eight to maybe eight, you know, maybe you make the playoffs, you know, I'll say seven to 11 or 12 seed. For the next five years, you know, for at least the rest of Beal's contract, had you kept him through all that. And there would have just been no progress made. As I said, I really would have liked this move to have been made a couple years ago. Because, you know, we could be talking about a completely different Wizards team right now. You know, all around from, you know, who they got last year to potentially who they got in 2021. To potentially, you know, obviously this year, either, you know, maybe you don't get the one or two pick for Victor or Scoop. But then maybe, you know, I think they probably could have moved up to two. 
uh, you know, had they have gotten, you know, maybe the third or fourth or fifth pick. But again, like I said, the worst is coming, but this is what needs to happen. Like you guys just really weren't getting anywhere. And I think most of y'all know that. And you know, again, I, I don't know. A lot of y'all dislike Beal, which, I, which is kind of, I mean, it, it's a little crazy to me. It does make sense. But like, honestly, bro, I would be mad at the front office before I'm mad at Beal because it's not, it's not Beal's fault that he's loyal and wanted to be there and all like, you know, it, it's the front office's fault for not trading him and not giving him that contract. I don't think, you know, again, like, I, I guess I get it why, you know, y'all don't really appreciate Beal maybe as much as you should, but you know, obviously he was holding y'all back, but in all honesty, the real thing holding y'all back was your front office. But hey, I mean, even though, you know, I mean, we know they have pool and some other guys, although they don't have, you know, their, you know, superstar top guy that, you know, you go out and try and get by being really bad. Maybe, you know, they'll be in a position to draft a guy like Ron Holland next year or, you know, Buzelis, some other people, you know, again, I think this is where the Wizards start moving in a, you know, obviously it's going to be a negative direction, but for a positive at the end. And again, man, you just look at the Wizards roster and like, I don't know, like, I really don't know if this team wins 20 games, man, which is what you want. I'm not going to lie. If you're a Wizards fan, that should be what you want. Y'all should be, you know, again, hey, at least y'all have something to look forward to now, you know, beyond 35 to 43 win seasons and you know Bradley I mean this man Bradley Beal was hooping again a couple years ago you know he's putting up 30 a night for back-to-back -back seasons they could have moved him but you know I, I you know again man you can't do anything about the past at this point all you can do is look forward to the future and at least the Washington Wizards have finally got the message that they need to go in a different direction and I think that's gonna wrap this video up if y'all enjoyed it please like it up and sub the channel it does help me out a ton also one comment your thoughts you know on what the Wizards are doing maybe Jordan Poole you know obviously the Beal move now that they added those picks and swaps into it and you know what I mean let me know what y'all think about you know bottoming out maybe some of y'all think that you know maybe the Wizards should have just kept going and been a you know mid team for a really long time which doesn't really make much sense to me but hey I mean to each is their own but like I said that's gonna wrap this one up I am up out of here peace